Good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to the BDC Diagnostic Education Webinar Series. So the topic for today is rare abnormal hemoglobin variants. As we all know, these rare abnormal uh, hemoglobin variants, uh, they are a burden to the society, wherein they require a lifelong uh, uh, support with blood transfusion, and it also leads to iron overload and the life also is not very suitable. So it is very important that we screen such cases. So nowadays uh, the government has made it mandatory for prenatal as well as uh, carrier screening. And uh, the method chosen by us is HPLC. So the speaker today with us is Dr. Hirel Machijia. And she is a budding uh, pathologist from our organization. She has completed her medicine from Government Medical College, Bhavnagar, Gujarat. And also, she is a PG from uh, CU Shah Medical College, Surendra Nagar, Gujarat. So, uh, before uh, giving my uh, listening to uh, Dr. Hirel, I would like to say, I request you all to give your comments on the chat box. So over to you, Dr. Hirel. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, let's begin uh, today's topic. The today's topic is uh, rare abnormal hemoglobin variants. So uh, we are uh, screening the uh, abnormal hemoglobin variants by the method in our lab, uh, HPLC, which is high performance liquid chromatography. This is a technique which separates the component in a mixture due to difference in physical and chemical properties from the analyte. Now, what is analyte? The analyte is a, a substance or a mixture to be separated during the process of chromatography. Here is a schematic uh, diagram for a HPLC technique in which there are uh, uh, main two phases, mobile phase and a stationary phase. In mobile phase, liquid, or gas or a combination of liquid and gas will, uh, which moves in a definite direction and in stationary phase, a solid or liquid which is immo immobilized will be detected in this uh, HPLC chamber. This process involves the interaction of component, compounds in the analyte which travel along the mobile phase across the immobile surface and compounds bind at specific region of stationary phase based on their physical and chemical properties. Now, the bound molecules are then eluted with a suitable buffer and uh, it, uh, same are collected with the detector based on time taken by specific substance that is called retention time. And we will identify the substance uh, on the basis of that retention time, that is the time taken by that particular substance. Uses of HPLC technique uh, are uh, uh, in a field of pharmaceuticals, forensic science, environmental studies, and clinical diagnosis to separate the uh, various substances. But here we are, uh, we are, uh, we are concerned about the uh, abnormal hemoglobin, which is identified and quantified by this method. And uh, it will help us to prevent the disease burden in upcoming generation. Uh, thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, and other all uh, uh, hemoglobin, hemoglobinopathies can be screened by this method. As uh, Madam said, uh, Indian population is having a huge burden of these hereditary disorders. Around 4% of the total population, that is 50 million carriers are already exist in India, having thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, or other hemoglobinopathies. That can lead to uh, 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 upcoming generation that will have this disease because they all are carriers. So nowadays, screening of hemoglobinopathies is mandatory uh, prenatal test to identify the carriers to prevent this disease in upcoming generation. Uh, now, a study of uh, abnormal hemoglobin by HPLC. But before proceeding the uh, HPLC procedure, we will uh, see some basics about hemoglobin. Uh, the hemoglobin structure is uh, containing heme compound and globin compound. And in globin compound, two types of uh, two type of globin uh, chains will be there. In adult hemoglobin, that is HbA. There are two alpha chain and two beta chains. Whereas in fetal hemoglobin, two alpha chain and two gamma chain will be there. And uh, it will remain in the uh, fetus till six months of age. Then it will start converting into adult hemoglobin. 
मेन एडल्ट हिमोग्लोबिन कंपोनेंट्स है एच बी ए दैट इज हैविंग एच बी टू अल्फा जेन इन टू बीटा जेन दैट इज मोर प्रिवेलेंट अबाउट नाइंटी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ एडल्ट हिमोग्लोबिन एंड एच बी ए टू दैट इज अल्फा टू एंड डेल्टा टू विच इज प्रेजेंट इन वेरी स्मॉल अमाउंट एंड सम स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ एच बी एफ दैट इज फिटल हिमोग्लोबिन विल ऑल्सो रिमेन इन द एडल्ट Now, uh, hemoglobin of pathies are uh, uh, classified in two types: quantitative defects and qualitative defects. Uh, qualitative defects uh, uh, will be having abnormal structure of hemoglobins due to point mutation, uh, uh, like sickle uh, HBS, that is sickle uh, cell anemia, or HBC, or the compound HBS or C. Th these are the example of qualitative hemoglobin of pathies. Whereas quantitative hemoglobin of pathies will be having Uh, uh, amount of uh, that uh, chain forming globin will be decreased or absent. Uh, that this is also due to point mutation or deletion. The examples are various type of thalassemia. If alpha chain is uh, defective, then it will call alpha thalassemia. And the beta chain is uh, having defect, then we will call it uh, beta thalassemia. Uh, accurate diagnosis of uh, heterozygous condition that is carriers. or the homozygous condition that is patients or the disease and the identification of different structural hemoglobin variants is important for epidemiological studies as well as for the management and prevention of major hemoglobin disorder and hplc is the uh, very sensitive specific and reproducible screening test so for hplc uh, test uh, uh, sample preparation is we will need a uh, edta that is whole blood sample which will uh, be received by us on uh, purple vacuum trainer and the sample stability is 7 days at 2 to 8 degree celsius and 3 days at 20 to 25 degree celsius pre requirement of the sample rather patient is patient should not be having blood transfusion in last 3 month that is the most mandatory condition of this test um, because it will affect the concentration of abnormal hemoglobin if it is there and the age of uh, patient is more than 6 uh, months because fetal hemoglobin is normally high in this age so accurate diagnosis cannot be given now we have to check the following details before giving final diagnosis as it is a genetic disorder and diagnosis will be the lifetime diagnosis so we will first see the uh, patient's details that is we will uh, check uh, name age gender uh, everything of the patient then we will see the clinical history which type of sign and symptom patient is having the dura duration of the symptoms then we will see the uh, complete blood picture the rbc morphology and the all the indices then we will uh, also see the family history whether their parents or sibling or spouse is having any uh, abnormal hemoglobin condition or not uh, the pregnancy status of the uh, female uh, of the reproductive age will also be required because the due to pregnancy some amount of uh, fetal hemoglobin uh, can be changed in uh, that is normal and other anemia should be ruled out before before uh, making the confirmed diagnosis uh, mainly nutritional anemias so here is a normal hemoglobin chromatogram which we are seeing on the screen but uh, before reading that chromatogram we have to see some checkpoints the first one is qc and calibration of the uh, our machine should be uh, accurate the we will first uh, check that and then we'll proceed the further then we will see the graph uh, x uh, uh, x axis is showing time that is retention time and y axis is showing a uh, percentage of uh, particular hemoglobin and the baseline should be straight uh, total area covered by uh, graph should be 1 to 3 million between this if uh, it is more than uh, 3 million or less than uh, 1 million then we have to check for the uh, concentration and the all the peaks should be sharp there is uh, no uh, curved uh, uh, peak should be there a uh, normal hemoglobin uh, uh, chromatogram is showing majority uh, uh, more than 90% uh, adult hemoglobin and the fetal hemoglobin is uh, 0 to 1% and the hba2 will be 2 to 3.5% and uh, there are no any other peak that is more than 6% that is mandatory most common hemoglobin uh, globinopathies that we are having in india are as following the first one is beta thalassemia trait uh, in that hba2 will be higher that is 4 to 8% and the hbf is also slightly increased that is 0 to 6% then we will label it beta thalassemia trait 
the beta thalassemia major will be having a majority amount of hbf instead of hba that is adult hemoglobin so it will up to 90% and normal or elevated hba2 with a hemolytic blood picture on the smear uh, uh, there will be nrvcs or uh, uh, target cell and the uh, uh, fragmented rvcs will be there that will uh, confirm the diagnosis of beta thalassemia major uh, uh, third one is uh, sickle heterozygous in that fetal hemoglobin will be 0 to 6 percent and the hbs that is s window will be 22 to 40 percent and the uh, hbs homozygous will be having hba2 normal and elevated hbf along with s window more than 50 percent then we will label it uh, hbs homozygous that is sickle cell anemia now we will go through some abnormal hemoglobin variants that are quite rare, but we are, uh, we have come across during our screening program. The first case is 24 year female with hemoglobin 7.5 uh, gram per uh, deciliter with MCV 52 uh, femtoliter and MCH 14.8 with RDW 25.6 percent. Uh, the chromatogram is showing unknown and sharp window of 14.5 percent at the retention time 4.7 to 4.9 that is the region of uh, where we usually get hbs or hpd region as it is a slow uh, slow moving variant uh, the diagnosis for this chromat uh, chromatogram is hpq india that is alpha chain structural variant in uh, that uh, on uh, codon 64 aspartic acid will be uh, replaced by histidine this uh, variant is mostly asymptomatic but if anemia is there, then it is due to nutritional deficiency. In our case, uh, uh, we, we were having that micro hypo picture. But when we saw uh, the patient's uh, biochemistry, then we come to know that iron studies is uh, revealing the iron deficiency anemia is also present in the patient. The unknown window can be 8 to 25 percent. In our case, it was 14.5 percent along with HbA level 60 to 75 percent, which normal HbF and HbA2. This uh, variant seen as isolated or compound uh, heterozygous with beta thalassemia trait. Uh, for that, HbA2 should be uh, more than 4 percent. The compound condition is that when one uh, one person or one patient is having two different conditions simultaneously. The second case is a 32 year female uh, with RBC count 5.2 cells per cubic millimeter with hemoglobin 12.8 and uh, MCV 79.3 and MCH 24.8 picogram. Uh, RDW is 17.1. That is quite normal. In chromatographic studies, P3 window, uh, we received 42.1% between HBF and HBA. The retention time was 1.07 to 3.7, that is broad uh, retention time. So uh, this variant can affect uh, other HB values on chromatogram. In this patient, when we uh, uh, know the, when we come to know the history, that patient was not getting HbA1c because some unknown uh, variant is affecting that uh, value. And so we gave the uh, differential diagnosis of HbJ. That is a, a showing unknown P3 peak due to alpha or beta variant or the HP Austin that is beta chain variant. In that beta chain on codon 14, arginine will be replaced by serine. Uh, the clinically, it is silent but can mimic the other hemoglobin during identification. And the third differential diagnosis is hemoglobin Santa Clara that is beta chain variant on codon 97, uh, histidine will be replaced by aspartame. So molecular test is uh, required for confirmation of the diagnosis as HPLC is a screening test. We cannot give confirmed diagnosis uh, in this type of cases. The third case is a 24 year male patient with 14.2 gram percentage uh, hemoglobin and RBC count 6.12 cells per cubic millimeter with MCV 72 and MCH 23.1 with RDW 15.1. In chromatogram of this patient, uh, uh, we got uh, illusion in HbA2 window 43% with HbF normal and uh, indices are quite uh, normal to reduced. Uh, this particular case is having HbD Iran variant that is beta chain variant. Uh, in uh, this uh, what happened molecular level, uh, 
uh, on 22nd codon, glutamic acid will be replaced by uh, glutamine. Sometimes it coexists with beta thalassemia or sickle cell anemia as compound heterozygous. The close ready of this, uh, this patient can be HVD punjab heterozygous, but in that patient, separate D, win, uh, D window will be there uh, with 25 to 40 percent. Uh, if the HPD Punjab homozygous is there, then D window will be more than 90%. And uh, if HPE trait, uh, trait was there, then HBA2 is less than 40%. But in our case, it was 42%. So we labeled it as HPD Iran. Again, okay? uh, family history and molecular diagnostic confirmation is required for this patient. Now, the another case is 38 year male patient with hemoglobin 14.2, RBC count, and other indices are totally normal but we were having uh, s window 18.6 percent now it cannot be a uh, sickle uh, heterozygous because for uh, labeling it sickle heterozygous uh, we have to uh, get the s window more than 22 percent so there was a uh, we uh, asked the history of the patient there was no any transplant history and no any family history re uh, related to hbs disease so it is confirmed that it is not hba disease then we uh, give the di uh, differential diagnosis of hemoglobin rust, uh, that is alpha chain variant, in that uh, on 51 codon, arginine will be replaced by uh, amino ethyl derivative. Another DD was HBY manalo, that is alpha chain variant, and uh, a molecular test will be required for the confirmation of this diagnosis. Uh, uh, another case is 24 year female with uh, uh, totally normal indices hemoglobin 12.4 rbc count 5 uh, 5 million cells per cubic millimeter and mcv 81 with mch 25 picogram and rdw 14.7 uh, this patient was having uh, in chromatogram this patient was having 0 0.9 uh, hba2 level that is decreased and in the graph we were uh, having some shouldering or split in the a2 peak that can be due to presence of uh, uh, delta chain variant that is masking HbA2 and causing false decrease of uh, HbA2. Uh, this can be delta globin chain mutation at codon 100 when proline is replaced by serin. This hemoglobin variant was found in Saurast region of the Gujarat, so it labeled as hemoglobin Saurast. And the thing is that it can mask the beta thalassemia trait diagnosis if there is borderline value of HbA2 along with uh, Hb delta chain variant because it masks the uh, HbA2. Uh, when this type of patient uh, uh, is uh, having a uh, thalassemia trait, but uh, he was not uh, knowing that I am the trait patient, and two uh, partners were having this type of uh, same uh, Hb Saurastra uh, hemoglobin, and uh, their kids will uh, can uh, can have uh, thalassemia major. This case happened in the Saurast region of Gujarat, and hence we came to know that this type of uh, delta chain variant is exist. So the molecular test is confirmatory to rule out the presence of delta chain variant in this type of patient. Uh, the another case was 27 year female with hemoglobin 90, uh, 9 9.8 gram per deciliter with MCV 71.1, MCH 21.6, and the RDW was 25.8%. In this patient, we got the D window, uh, just 5.8%, and with uh, normal HBF and HBA2. Uh, we uh, gave the differential diagnosis for this patient was hemoglobin done, that is alpha chain variant, and hemoglobin dofer, that is beta chain uh, variant. Uh, again, molecular test will confirm the diagnosis, and uh, it can be seen as a compound heterozygous with beta thalassemia. Another and the last case uh, was 24 year female with uh, came for antenatal screening. When we saw her hemogram, the RBC indices were completely normal. But uh, when we saw a chromatogram of this patient, it was clearly showing uh, uh, values uh, that, that, was, uh, that was like thalassemia trait, HbA2 4.2%. There was no any transfusion, transfusion history or no any other treatment history in this patient. So we advised the uh, parental screening and her father was diagnosed as beta thalassemia trait. So this was a, a rare case we diagnosed as, as a thalassemia trait with normal uh, uh, RBC indices. Uh, these are the instruments that we are using in our lab 
variant 2 from BioRed and Tosho G11 for HPLC testing. Now we will see some common doubts that comes in mind during HPLC uh, report interpretation. Uh, how nutritional anemia can affect the result of HPLC? So iron deficiency anemia can cause falsely uh, decrease HbA2 level and the megaloblastic anemia falsely elevate the HbA2 level. So it is advisable to rule out and treat nutrition deficiency before going for HPLC test. Uh, total hemoglobin percentage sometimes cannot be 100% on, on your report because other picks and unknown windows that is less than 6% was uh, is not having any significance in reporting so we don't report it on uh, that uh, the hpa2 level between 3.5 to 4 uh, percent as it is uh, inconclusive we suggest partner or peri parental uh, screening as well as molecular test for the confirmation of the diagnosis uh, most of the abnormal hemoglobin carriers are asymptomatic or having mild anemia but when both partners are carrier or heterozygous the children can have disease, that is homozygous condition or compound state when do two different hemoglobinopathies in one person. When a uh, P3 peak is high, we suspect the degeneration of the sample. So we ask for repeat uh, and fresh sample for confirmation of diagnosis for the patient. Uh, when P2 peak is high in presence of diabetes, so we have to correlate with the history and that is mandatory because it is due to diabetes not due to any abnormal uh, uh, conditions and the last one is when hbf is uh, uh, increased uh, we have to uh, rule out these things like in sporadic population sometimes one to five percent is normal if patient is pregnant then five to ten percent can be seen and when patient ha uh, patient is having leukemias like juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia, acute lymphocytic leukemia, or acute myeloid leukemia, or sometimes hypothyroidism, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, or aplastic anemia can cause the elevation of HBF. So, uh, correlation with clinical condition and a complete blood picture is mandatory. So, this is all about uh, HPLC reporting and rare abnormal hemoglobin variant. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hiral, for your such a nice presentation on uh, rare abnormal hemoglobin variants. So you have uh, enlightened us upon the basics also. Apart from that, we could hear some very interesting rare cases. So and in one of your cases, uh, like uh, we were glad we were able to uh, screen the father also of a carrier mother. I mean, uh, uh, partner of uh, the carrier mother, wherein uh, we could uh, prevent the birth of a baby with abnormal hemoglobin, that is thalassemia trait, uh, or, or a major one. So, and um, uh, one thing I want to highlight is, uh, like, uh, when we get one uh, diagnosis, like, as you said, in Saurashtra, so... Uh, when we have diagnosed as Delta variant, but it can mask an, another uh, he abnormal hemoglobin also like thalassemia trait. So we have to be very careful in that. And one more thing is, uh, these are all screening tests and uh, molecular studies are the final confirmation confirmatory tests. So, uh, and now uh, I want to thank the audience also for patiently listening to our webinar. And uh, now, finally, we are ready for the comments and questions. I don't find any comments or questions. So, uh, so with this, we end the webinar series. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am.